We're here with uh, Nigel Winterburn at the York Hall. Uh, first of all, Nigel, are you enjoying the night of boxing? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Uh, you know, I've got to admit, I'm not a massive uh, boxing fan, but to uh, to see uh, these amateurs right from the you know the young boys uh, coming up through the ages, it's, it's been really uh, it's been really enjoyable tonight. Yeah, definitely, and uh, here supporting um, a massive Arsenal fan, Mo Farah, and of course uh, Tony Adams as well. who's here with the Azerbaijan side. Yeah, obviously supporting the, the two charities, but uh, mainly here obviously to support um, to support Tony really as well. So. Uh, yeah, it's been a, been a fantastic night. It's a good turnout as well. A lot of people have, uh, you know, put a lot lot of effort into uh, pull this evening together, and uh, it looks like it's going down very well. And, and I mean, um, did you ever used to go to any boxing events? I used to have them at um, Wembley, at uh, Highbury, even I've, at I've White been, Hart Lane. I've been to a couple, couple of the uh, to, to a couple of amateur boxing uh, mm. before. I mean, I was really into it when Barry McGregor was fighting. I used to like. Barry fighting. I used to watch a lot of the the, the fighting then, but uh, sort of current day, you know, I've got a bit. You know, I'm not really into it. I still keep an eye on it and see see who's who and uh, you know the fights coming up and what's what's gone by. But uh, I, I've got to admit, I've enjoyed it tonight. I think because mainly uh, early on it was the younger age groups, and I love to see those those young boys going at it, but showing so much discipline as well. Definitely. And I mean. These days, a lot of the Premier League clubs and probably even lower league clubs, they do a boxer size and have the pad work. Um, was that something you guys used to do? In, um... uh, we used to do li little bits of it. I mean, I must admit, when I do my training now, I do a lot. You know, I do a lot of work with uh, with the boxing with, with the pads as well. So uh, it, you, it gets you a heart rate up very, very quickly. I, I can tell you that. And also the clubs. You know, a lot of the clubs now are doing a lot of work in the community. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, it's just trying to help children go in the right direction, really. And uh, you know, boxing is one of those sports. But some people, you know, don't don't agree with it. Mm. But I think it's a fantastic, you know, fantastic discipline for some, for some of the young, for the, some of the young kids to be in. No, definitely. And in terms of um, in terms of the boxing and uh, <coughs> sorry, in terms of the boxing and what it does for the youth. Um, I mean, you can see the next lot of British stars and. Could, could football learn something from the way boxing brings up youth players, the uh, youth uh, fighters? It, it, it's possible, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, we, you know, we, we talk about the dedication they have to put in, the amount of training they've got to put in. On top of that, the, you know, the discipline that they've they've got to to use as well. So, you know, it, it could work in, in in football as well. But you know, I just think you know, with all the particularly the Premier League clubs now, they're spending a lot of time out in their local communities mm. and, and they're promoting not only football, but they are promoting a lot of sports and we need, we need to keep doing that. And uh, during your playing days, um, teammates or opponents, who do you think would have made the best boxer? Oh, I don't know about that because sometimes, you know, the ones that look rough and ready and you think they'd, they'd be good. I always say be, be wary of the quiet one because mm. they're the ones that really, when things, things they lose their temper, can can probably uh, get into a good good fight. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to put anyone forward, but, um, it, you know, uh, it, it's, it's really hard to tell. It's, you, you don't get tested until you get into that <laughs> ring, do you? And I uh, can't uh, leave um, without talking to you about football, the World Cup at the moment. Um, first of all, what have you made? Of, what did you make of England's um, participation in the World well, Cup? Well, disappointing because obviously we, we came into it with low expectation, but I think a lot of people secretly, when they looked at the squad, were thinking that we should come out of the group. Um, you know, and a, it, it, a couple of guys, Italy, there was some some nice football. We, you know, we created some opportunities, I think against Uruguay it was a disappointing performance and then it's very very difficult, Costa Rica is just a dead game really, so it, it, you know that's really really difficult to, to, to judge anything on but I think overall it will be disappointing mm. uh, to see us come home too early when you look at some of the teams that have got through and performing and are performing very very well. It's one of them again is it for England, what if? But uh, I'm pleased that we've got some younger players in the squad and we've got to keep that progression going now and then hopefully, hopefully these young guys can take us forward over the next sort of six to eight years. And stick with Roy Hodgson? Well listen, you, you, for me, I, I, I don't like all the witch hunting about whether the manager's good enough or not. We've got a manager in charge. We've got to hope that he can, he can bring uh, something to really promote these young guys and make them feel that uh, 
you know, England something special and, and take us on to the next level yeah. because we're too far down the pecking order at the moment. We need to try and lift our game to start competing with, with, with some of the some of the teams on international level. And let's hope that the, the younger players can, you know, can do that, as I say, over the next two, four, maybe even eight years. And I mean, it's been a great World Cup, lots of goals, very attacking football, uh, we've had upsets, um, but um, one of the negatives, uh, probably the negative of the World Cup, was the Luis Suarez incident. What did you make of that and the, the four-month ban he's been given? Well, listen, I think, you know, I, tr I would really like to try and focus on the football because, like you say, it has been, it's, it's been exciting, it's been fascinating. As I say, some of the lesser-known teams as well uh, coming, coming through out of their groups. I mean, listen, uh, you know, when someone does what they've done, like Luis Suarez has done three times, I think you expect to, to, to get that ban. But also on top of that, you know, he needs, or hopefully will get some help as into why, uh, you know, why that keeps happening. I think that's the important part as well. Listen, if you look at him as a footballer, he's absolutely a sensational player. Um, but his reputation is now starting to let him down, and that's a disappointing thing. And what, what do you think Liverpool do? Do you think they'll keep hold of him, or do you think it's I, now time be, to cut ties? Do, do you know what? I think it's very early. I think it, every, there's loads and loads of speculation at the moment. Uh, Liverpool will make the right decision for them when the, when the time is right. And uh, finally, who, who do you think will go on and uh, lift the trophy? Um, Listen, I, th I, th yeah. I genuinely believe there's probably one of eight teams that seriously believe that they can, can win the competition. I don't think there's an outstanding team, but the teams have got some very strong individual players uh, playing to a high level at the moment as well. So in knockout competition, you need everything to go right for you and you need your big players to perform. So I, I think there's probably one of eight who could win it quite easily. No, definitely. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. No problem.